Here's the Curves dialog box. We are going to spend the next few minutes to learn how to use this dialog box, and before we actually start using it in Photoshop, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how it works, so you'll be able to use Curves not only in this tutorial, but actually know what Curves is going to do when you go to use it on your own, on your own images, um, and things like that. So, let's look here at the Curves dialog box, and Curves is a visual representation of your image in the form of this line going across this grid, and it shows the darkest pixels of your image as this anchor point down here and the lightest pixels of your image as this anchor point here and you can push or pull additional anchor points around on this line by clicking on the line anywhere and it creates an anchor point and then you can click and drag that line uh, to move it around or you can use your arrow keys in conjunction with shift for big increments just like using the move tool or you can just use the arrow keys just like that for more precise tuning of your curve okay so when we push or pull a line, how do we know what's going to happen? Well, there's a few things you have to remember about curves. One of which is that this side of your line is darkness. When the line goes into this side of where the line originally starts out, it adds darkness to your image. Okay, And whatever part of that line, depending on the part of the line, it depends on what part of your image is actually affected. For example, if up here goes in, it's going to be the lighter part of your image because up here, remember, are the lighter pixels in your image. Down here are darker pixels. In through here are all of the midtones. So depending on what part of the line you pull into darkness, you're going to add darkness to your image. One of the other things you have to remember is up here is light. The exact opposite will happen when you push any part of your curve into that part of the curves grid here. Okay, by doing that, you're going to add light to whatever part of your image you have pushed. Okay, so if you push the darker part of your image, you're going to add light to that. Push the lighter part of your image, you're going to add light to that. Okay, and that's about it. So just remember that curves, depending on which way you push it, you're going to add light or darkness. And that's really a big key to remember when you're working with curves. Okay, so with that said and done, let's get into Photoshop and uh, play with a couple images and really figure out how to use curves. Okay, so I've brought up this picture of this church here. And what we're going to do is increase the contrast of this church. And just make sure you have the layer with the image selected. And if you're just working with an image, it's your background layer. And come up here to Image, Adjustments, Curves. And what we want to do is darken up the sky and increase the lightness of the church. And when you're using curves, a, a trick is, see that eyedropper? My cursor's turned into an eyedropper. Anywhere you click, it's going to show you where on the curve that part of the image is. So let's say I want to lighten right up here. Okay, when I click, I can see there's a little circle that comes up over, around that part of the curve. And you can click and hold your mouse and move it around. And it's just going to move that little circle, depending on what part of the image you go to. The same thing happens when I go over the church. I get up to the lighter part of my image. Okay, so we want to we want to darken up the sky. So I'm moving around up there, and I want to put a point right there. Another trick is hold down the control key and just click, and you put the point wherever you've sampled. All right, so we're going to drag that down, just like that, and now we're going to come over the church, right there. Let's say control click or command click if you're on a Mac, I should say, and we're going to brighten up the church a little bit. Now what we've just made is a traditional S curve. It's used by a lot of photographers using curves uh, to increase contrast in an image. And that's exactly what we've done if you look at the image. And the way an S curve works is it increases your lights and decreases your darks or intensifies your shadows and intensifies your highlights and that equals more contrast. And the steeper your curve is, the more you intensify, you see we're pulling <clears throat> that lower anchor point right into darkness more so we're intensifying our shadows and if we pull that up we're going to intensify our highlights the trick with an s-curve is the steeper the s-curve the more contrast okay because the further you've pulled your points into either light or dark alright so let's leave it about right there and let's hit ok and now we can just check out a quick before and after and you can see we've added a significant amount of contrast that's a pretty simple thing to do with curves Let's check out another image. Now, let me also add that I'm only using curves in this tutorial because it's a basics curves uh, tutorial. I'm only using it to make some uh, brightness and contrast changes, um, but curves can be used as an entire color correction tool. So, again, come up here to Adjustments, Curves. We're not going to get into doing color corrections in this tutorial. There'll be a more advanced tutorial 
on curves coming soon, hopefully very soon. All right, so one other thing that I should have pointed out before was these grayscales, make sure they're running from black to white, just like mine are, not from white to black, like that. If they're running from white to black, the only way to fix that is to take your monitor and turn it all the way upside down because everything you're going to be doing is going to be upside down and backward of what I'm doing. No, I'm just kidding. The real way to fix it is just hit that little arrow right there and that'll do it. If you want to turn your monitor upside down, feel free. But this is the easy way to do it. All right, so we've got our line here and we know that our grayscales are supposed to be running that direction. And we've got this image here, which isn't a bad photo, but we're going to make it even better by increasing the contrast and we're going to increase the brightness uh, values of a few areas of the image. So let's pull down on this to darken up this foreground. Pull up on this part to intensify the highlights up here in the sky. I don't want to do it too much. I'm watching the clouds up here. I don't want them to be completely blown out and white like that. That would be a bad thing. And then we're going to come back in here in an attempt to lighten up the cliff face a little bit. And we're going to put a sec. We, I just put another point in here and I'm just playing with it just a little bit. I don't want to mess with it too much, but I just want to do it enough that my foreground will be lightened up a bit more. Okay, just like that. That's going to be good. So hit OK, and we can check out a quick before and after, and you can see now the before image looks very bad, and the after image looks wonderful. That is another quick way to use curves, and uh, those are basically the basics of curves. Let me show you one quick other thing that you're going to need to know about curves, and that is when you're working on an image with curves, let's just take this one we just adjusted, and let's pull the shadows up. We want to brighten the shadow and we want to darken the highlights, just like that. Now, if we look at the image, we've taken that nice image and just completely destroyed it. Well, the, what's doing that, actually, is this evil little thing right here in the middle called a flat spot. Flat spots are horrible things. Avoid them at all costs when you're working with a curve. The other thing you want to avoid are downhill spots like this one right here. These are also evil. The reason you do not want them is because they do very bad things to your image. And in this case, what a flat spot does, a flat spot kills contrast. A flat spot does the exact opposite of an angle. Okay? If you have a line going straight up and down, you have absolutely maximum contrast. If you have a la line going across, you have absolutely minimal contrast. If I were to take this line and make it go straight across, the entire image would just turn gray because it would be zero contrast. Absolutely no lightness difference between any of the pixels. So that's what a flat spot does. It's just a small flat spot. Okay, So now we've got these large areas of gray because there's absolutely no contrast in them. And you can see that just by lifting that, we make the image look a lot better. The other thing you want to avoid, as I mentioned before, are downhill spots. And the reason you want to avoid downhill spots is... I will show you. Let me just drag my lights all the way down and drag my darks all the way up. Look at this image. It's turned into a negative. And if it's done to the whole line, when you have a downhill run in part of your curve, it is turning that part of your image into a negative. And you can see the sky looks very messed up, the hills, everything looks very bad. Because the majority of my image at this point has been turned into a negative. But it's keeping a lot of the original image, which makes it look even worse. So you want to avoid downhill spots as well, unless you're going for that solarized effect for some project or something. I don't know. There are there are reasons. Um, so those are the two things you want to avoid. Um, another couple things I want to tell you. Say you've made a curve. You've got this huge, crazy curve going on, and you finally look at it and you decide that it definitely isn't what you wanted. Well, you can get rid of curve points by clicking and dragging and just pulling until they break off. Or just imagine you're pulling them off the grid, okay? Or, let's say you go and you play with it some more and you make it look even worse. Instead of going and pulling the grid points off again, hold down the Alt or the Option key and check out the Cancel button. And this is actually something that happens throughout most of Photoshop. It happens with a lot of these dialogues. When you hold the Alt key, it just turns into a Reset button. Just like that, okay? So that's the basics of curves, and I hope you'll learn something from it. I hope you'll start to use curves. Once you start using them, once you realize how powerful curves are, you'll never look back. You, you just you never will. It's just an incredible tool in Photoshop. It's great for photographers. And uh, check out tutfit.com for more free video tutorials. And I hope you enjoyed this one, and hope to see you around again soon.